I am Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. The line that made the world laugh will tell you what the president said that made 193 nations lol. Getting bungee with it, Will Smith jumps out of a plane for YouTube and his 50th birthday. China and Sweden have a falling out after this video went viral, but is there more to the story? And coffee lovers meet in Istanbul for a festival of joke. Now, top of our news feed, the United Nations General Assembly. It's a gathering of world leaders in New York and a chance for them to all make a speech. It kind of epitomizes what people both love and loathe about the UN. A massive talking shop that achieves nothing or an amazing coming together of the world where each nation's voice is given equal weight. And everyone online has been sharing the moment that Donald Trump got a big laugh and it was at him, not with him. Have a look. In less than two years, my administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. Well, then people began resurfacing this old Trump tweet, which went viral again. In it, he writes uh, about a president not being the laughing stock, slack, laughing stock of the entire world. For someone who rarely laughs, least of all at himself, many commentators suggest this could have been a sobering moment for Mr. Trump. And of course, this got us thinking what other moments from the UN NGA will go down in history for all the wrong reasons. Ezra has a look through the vaults. George W. Bush in 2005. And this is his note asking if he could use the bathroom. Hugo Chavez in 2006 called out George W. Bush and complained of a bad smell. In este mismo lugar, huele a sufre todavía. Muammar Gaddafi in 2009, he spoke for an hour and 40 minutes and decided to rip pages out of the United Nations Charter. <laughs> Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in 2011 questioned if 9-11 really happened. People walked out in protest. and Benjamin Netanyahu in 2012. Where should a red line be drawn? He used a cartoon bomb to talk about the Iranian nuclear program. Before Iran completes the second stage of nuclear enrichment. All right, let's take a look at some other things that caught our eye on social media. Bill Cosby will spend between three and 10 years in prison after being found guilty of sexual assault. He was once one of the world's best known comedians. Now he's the latest high profile man brought down by his own behaviors. TRT World spoke to one of Cosby's first victims just as the sentence was announced. <laughs> oh my God. How'd you feel? <laughs> elated, completely elated. Just thrilled. He's just pathological as far as I'm concerned and most of us, but deviant serial rapist who got away with 50 years. I am 70 years old, and he raped me when I was 17, twice, twice. Then the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, AKA Mike Lowry, AKA Will Smith, has been paid by YouTube to jump out of a helicopter for his 50th birthday. And YouTube got some of the cast of Fresh Prince there to look, look, it's Carlton. 
The jump apparently raised money for charity. Smith is now a vlogger, so I'm sure we can expect more internet-inspired nonsense in the years that come. Oh, goody. <laughs> Now the world's biggest biometric identity card system has been declared legal by the Indian Supreme Court. The Aadhaar, which was a top trend on Twitter earlier, is a huge undertaking by India and could allow for hundreds of millions currently outside the scope of services to benefit from services. It could also be abused and put people at risk. Nia is in Delhi. The Indian Supreme Court has said that the Aadhaar details or the biometric details of any citizen of the country cannot be shared uh, with any entity or on any public forum unless it's a question of national security. It's also said that the government needs to do more to ensure that Aadhaar databases are free from any kind of breach. And on this day of this landmark judgment, everyone's speaking only of one man, Mr. Arya Sharma. He is the head of the Telecom Regulatory Authority in India. And a few months ago, he had uh, challenged people on Twitter uh, sharing his Aadhaar details saying see if you can hack into my uh, into the Aadhaar database and leak my details which is what hackers had eventually ended up doing uh, today he's quite conspicuous by silence only retweeting someone who's uh, focusing on one aspect of the Supreme Court judgment someone who said that Aadhaar empowers those on margins uh, and uh, he's essentially choosing uh, to focus only on that uh, praise that the Supreme Court uh, uh, heaped on the Aadhaar uh, challenge. You've got Amrit Raj who's saying wonder what Mr. Arash Sharma is thinking on a day like this when the Supreme Court has said that uh, the Aadhaar database needs to be made more secure. Also questioning what uh, India's Telecom Minister Aras Prasad and the man who founded the Aadhaar Nanda Nilakani are thinking. You've got Kaushik saying Aadhaar is proven unsafe by what the Supreme Court said and that's a huge digital slap right in the face of the TRAI chairman, that's Mr. Arash Sharma. There are others as well who are focusing on another aspect of the judgment which said that you don't need to link your Aadhaar to your uh, cell phone number or to your bank account. Uh, Mr. Javid is saying that uh, uh, mobile phone operators and banks, you harassed us, forced us to link Aadhaar, and now you must ensure that you delete that data. You've got uh, another person who's already uh, written to a local bank here, ICICI, saying that uh, how do I delink my details that you blackmailed me into giving you? And finally, someone who's uh, focusing on how the Aadhaar database is still quite prone to breaches. He's tweeted out a link to an article that says that uh, the details of 45 million Indians have been breached in the state of Andhra Pradesh. So clearly the controversy surrounding Aadhaar in India is far from over. Now a bizarre diplomatic dispute is going on right now between China and Sweden and it involves a viral video and racism. How very 2018. Here's a conch to explain. And these people just do it this way. See, we are here and people are sick. Here, who can help them? This video triggered a diplomatic spat between China and Sweden. Earlier this month, police in Stockholm removed some Chinese tourists from one of the city's hostels. Apparently, they were trying to sleep in the lobby 14 hours before check-in time. The situation was made worse when Sweden's satirical TV show Swedish News made fun of Chinese tourists, giving them some do's and don'ts for visiting Sweden. The clip dubbed in Mandarin went viral in China after it was uploaded on video sharing site Yoku. And the hashtag Swedish TV show insults Chinese people began trending, along with calls to boycott Sweden and Swedish brands such as IKEA, H&M and Volvo. Even the Chinese foreign ministry weighed in. It amounts to gross insult, to the vicious attack on China and the Chinese people. The program leader's comments are full of prejudices, biases and provocations against China and some other ethnic groups. It's a serious violation of media professional ethics. We strongly condemn that. 
The Chinese Foreign Ministry and the Chinese Embassy in Sweden have lodged stern representations in strong protest with the Swedish side in Beijing and in Stockholm, respectively. But is there something more at play? Some people think this is really about China's detention of Hui Minhai, a Hong Kong-based publisher with Swedish citizenship. He mysteriously vanished in 2015 and was later confirmed to be in Chinese custody. China state television accused Sweden of orchestrating his kidnapping. Another incident which could have added fuel to the fire is a recent visit from the Dalai Lama to Sweden. He is the spiritual leader of the Tibetan people, but China has been locked in sovereignty dispute over Tibet for decades. Sweden was the first Western country to enter into diplomatic relations with China in 1950. But could this be the beginning of the end of their friendship? Right, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Wednesday. There's trouble at the top of Australia's public broadcaster, the ABC. The staff have walked out today protesting what they call government interference. Now, earlier this week, the ABC's board inexplicably sacked the managing director, Michelle Guthrie. Now it's rumoured an email has been sent by the chairman of the board, Justin Milne, demanding that Guthrie fire one of the broadcaster's biggest names because the government didn't like her reporting. Journalists at the ABC are calling for Milne to resign. He says he's going nowhere. A competition for a parking space in Texas led to this, an SUV driving through the window of a bakery. Uh, it actually injured 10 people, thankfully no one seriously. The driver managed to get out safely. I hope the cupcakes were worth it. And this image called the distracted boyfriend meme is sexist, that's according to Sweden. The image was used in an advert for a job at a Swedish firm called Barnhof. In the ad, the boyfriend was labelled you, the girlfriend was your old job, and the second woman was Barnhof. The advertising ombudsman said it objectified the two women, but had the man as an individual. Ah, uh, coffee, my first and favourite drink of the day, especially if it's Monday. And I'm not alone, 2.2 billion cups are drunk around the world each day. And that leads to the age-old debate, how do you take yours? Well, we sent Mo down to Istanbul's annual coffee festival to find out. One of the biggest pet peeves for baristas is when a customer makes a complicated or special coffee order. Let's go speak to baristas to find out some of the worst and weirdest orders they've ever received. En büyük bardağı espresso sonuna kadar çekmemi istemişti. Americano with milk syrup. Even he asked, do you have cacao on it? Şeker ve süt. Gerçekten kahvenin tadını alamazlar. Aromayı hissedemezler. Sometimes my customers want to instant coffee. Why? Why you don't like it? Because of it's not herbal. Aldığım en kötü kahve siparişi aslında demlemeleri süt ve şeker eklenmesi. Bir de latte'nin içine bin bir farklı şurup eklenmesi. For me it's really disgusting when people order these or maybe with alcohol. For me it's blasphemy. Yeah. Ekstra ekstra böyle bonibon tarzı süslemeler benim için çok yanlış. Kahvede böyle bir şeyin olmaması lazım. Kahve kültüründe bir lezzet profili var. Bu profili bu şekilde yani farklı etkenlerle düşürdüğümüze inandığım için tabi bu kötü hissettiriyor. Soya sütlü değil ki kahve hiç kahve değilmiş gibi. Güzel kahve zaten lezzetli bir şey. Şuruba ya da şekere ihtiyacı yok. Look we all want a good cup of coffee. So be nice to your barista. Teşekkürler Emin. Or you end up with a decaf. Oh, these are nice. El Salvadorian. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And in today's Animals Doing Stuff, it's lost in the Thames. Now, the internet has called this beluga whale Benny. Now, these guys are normally found in the Arctic, so this one is way off course. Conservationists are hoping it'll find its way out soon and are urging people to not get too close. That's all from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to us with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again tomorrow.